Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg that leave be given to bring in a bill to make provision about support for victims who have been severely injured or bereaved as a result of acts of terrorism by an unconnected person or organisation in the United Kingdom, to establish a review of pension support for such victims, to require that review to make proposals for additional support taking account of the effects on occupational pension provision for such victims and for connected purposes. It is an absolute privilege to present this 10-minute rule bill here today. This is an issue that I and my colleagues care very deeply about and on which I have been involved for many years. It is particularly poignant that this month marks the first anniversary of the Manchester Arena bombing, an appalling act of terrorism that has touched and continues to touch so many hundreds of people in its brutal impact. When a terrorist attack happens, it rightly unites our nation in shared revulsion and condemnation. The headlines show the appalling and shocking events. <coughs> the voices of those hurt, the pictures of chaos and distress from the scene, and the stories of those lost are given, rightly, prominence across our media platforms. We stand united in grief, as the images of horror and destruction are shown on television screens, computers and newspapers. <coughs> Thoughts, prayers and best wishes are sent. People post and change their social media profile to images of solidarity. Yet, how quickly after the headlines have faded, for many, the acuteness of the shock and the horror dissipates. The rest of the world, it seems, moves on. But for those most deeply impacted, it is often the end of their world as they knew it. Their lives have been shattered. They continue to suffer the loss of a loved one, a huge human-shaped gap in their lives, a loving child, spouse, sister or brother, mother or father, friend, gone in the most brutal of ways. These are tears that will continue to fall long after the media frenzy has passed. There are those whose journey only begins once the headlines change and the profile pictures revert. That long, painful process of recovery from severe physical injuries. And for others, the mental health pressures of the trauma they experienced and witnessed may take many years to manifest, blighting lives, relationships and hope. In Northern Ireland, we have been disproportionately impacted by terrorism. Those violent attacks and atrocities made victims from all religions, races, faiths and creeds. Compassion for their needs should be something that unites us all, regardless of your political opinion and view. And I look forward to working and continuing to work closely with my colleagues in Northern Ireland, including the Honourable Member from North Down, and also with colleagues from across this House. We have seen at first hand in Northern Ireland that the needs of victims often last a lifetime. I believe that the United Kingdom should aspire to be the global leader in how we treat our victims of terrorism. And that is why, in this bill, I am calling for a comprehensive review on the support we give to all our victims of terrorism across the United Kingdom. The terrorism that impacted so significantly in Northern Ireland also destroyed lives across the UK, from London to Warrington, Birmingham and beyond. Nor is the issue of victims of terrorism simply one of legacy. This, sadly, is a continuing threat and reality. However, how we remember the wrongs of the past and support those who were hurt the most should be the very hallmark of what we are as a society. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is about compassion. Victims must not be forgotten. Yeah. It is right and proper that their needs are addressed and that this work should be led from the very top from our government. I believe a comprehensive review leading to enhanced support and clear actions can make us a world leader in the care and support that we give. There are a number of distinct areas I want to touch on briefly, many of which uh, are based on our experience in Northern Ireland. Firstly, the needs of the bereaved. In any atrocity, the family and loved ones should be treated with compassion and care. 
Timely information and support services should be provided as quickly as possible. The trauma and distress of losing a loved one in such a sudden and violent way brings about particular challenges. Counselling and bereavement services must be available where and when they are needed. Such a loss can also create a sudden change of family circumstances and financial hardship. I have also had the opportunity to speak to those victims bereaved and injured in relation to Libyan supplied Semtex. Much work has been done to try and secure support and compensation for these victims. I would strongly urge the Government to look afresh and urgently at the proposals seeking to support victims in need. I welcome the engagement so far, but now is the time for action. A review should look into the options of how to secure monies from the Libyan Government, but also how support can happen now while those negotiations are ongoing. Secondly, a review must examine the mental health legacy of terrorism and violent trauma. Over recent years, a number of key studies, particularly in Northern Ireland, has examined the profound impact of terrorism and violent trauma on mental health, and often this does not manifest itself until many, many years later. Self-harm, suicidal ideation, rates of suicide, substance abuse, and family breakup are all considerably higher amongst those who have suffered the trauma of terrorism. The review must look at how mental health supports can can be put in place both at community and NHS level to identify and address trauma in victims and build on the incredible work that organisations already do across the United Kingdom in this field. Thirdly, the review should examine the impact of dealing usually with the aftermath of a terrorist attack on our emergency services and first responders to the scene. Over recent decades, we have all become much more aware of the impacts of trauma on mental health. In Northern Ireland, during the worst of the terrorist campaign, there was limited support and help for those police officers, army, ambulance staff, firemen, nurses and doctors who are on the front line in dealing with horrific injuries and multiple casualties. Many were left deeply traumatised, and for many, post-traumatic stress disorder was not identified or did not manifest itself until many years later. I know that across this House we would all want to pay tribute to those brave men and women who work so valiantly under incredibly difficult circumstances to help and support the dying and injured. A review should examine how we can have a comprehensive and timely support service for our emergency services. And lastly, I want to speak briefly about the particular needs of the physically disabled. In the Manchester Arena attack, over 100 people were injured, some of those very severely. The headline figures are often about those who tragically lose their lives. But I believe we all underestimate the gravity of the injuries caused by these types of attacks. Over the years, tens of thousands of people across the United Kingdom have been left with serious traumatic injuries as a result of terrorism. These victims are living with these injuries every day. The availability of severe pain management, rehabilitation support, prosthetics and other aids is critical throughout the decades that they have to live with these injuries. But the review must also examine the proposal of the introduction of a special pension for the severely disabled across the United Kingdom. Many victims of terrorism suffered from traumatic injury to limbs, particularly lower limbs. And although I welcome that workplaces have increasingly become more accessible for those with mobility challenges, particularly wheelchair users, we should also recognise that this was not always the case. For many victims, they sustained these horrific lower limb and other injuries relatively early in their working lives. Most workplaces were not suitable for wheelchair access during these decades, and many had to leave work. This has created a very particular wrong as those victims who continue to suffer these terrible severe injuries are dealing with the impact of ageing on those injuries and they face older age without any occupational or work-related pension. I pay tribute to the many victims who have worked so hard on this issue in raising its profile and meeting with politicians across the various political parties to raise awareness about this. I do not wish to dwell for long on the definition of victim issue. Safe to say, to me, this is very straightforward. The terrorist who drives the van into crowds of people, who wields the knife, who shoots to kill and plants the bomb, is not a victim, even if he is killed in doing so. To me, that is absolutely clear and right. That is why I have clearly referenced in the long title of this bill, Acts of Terrorism by an Unconnected Person or Organisation. 
In conclusion, I hope the Government will listen and respond to the calls for a comprehensive review of support for victims of terrorism across the United Kingdom, and that there is continued wide support in my call for compassion and action to support all of those brave victims from across this country and to get the help they need and deserve. The, the Honourable Member, I believe, to bring in the Bill. The question is that the Honourable Member, I believe, to bring in the Bill, as many of that opinion say, aye. aye. The contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare to bring in the Bill? Kate Hoeing, Andrew Bowie, Andrew Bridgen, Colin Clark, Faisal Rashid, Andrew Rosendale, Lawrence Robertson, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, Nigel Dodds, Ian Paisley, Gavin Robinson and myself. And the little penga. Pensions and other support bill. Second reading, what day? 26th of October. 26th of October. 